Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com Welcome to the Bottom Line Sports Show, an inside look at all game day sports action. From Major League Baseball to college football and basketball, the NFL and the NBA, key matchups, developments, point spreads and totals, line changes and game analysis. It's a radio show that talks its name. The Bottom Line from San Diego. It's game time with the Bottom Line Sports Show. All right. Good morning, San Diego. Welcome. Tom DeLurba here. Felix Taverna will be joining us in one second. Thanks for joining us. You're listening to The Bottom Line, a sports talk show telling you all the current events going on. We'll be talking college basketball and some other action today. But let's go right out to Maddie B. in Boston. Maddie B. Jo- uh, took the week off, weekend off last week. Uh, happy birthday, Maddie B. Good to have you back on the show. Uh, how was your birthday? Oh, thank you, Tommy, and good morning, WS Radio Nation. My birthday was great. Spent it. In the great, great state of Michigan, had my girl with me, had my mom with me, family. It was a wonderful time. Weather held up. It was uh, it was a good weekend. Nice, good to hear. Well, we're glad to have you back. Uh, we had some uh, some things happen uh, since you left. Uh, how oh about this God. college basketball turning into a mess? Talk what about a talk mess. to us. And you know, I, I'm wondering where I'm wondering where Felix is right now because Felix is in very close with a prominent name in this list, a name that got dropped yesterday, a little later after everything else. So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, this started with the Louisville scandal with Rick Pitino that got the legendary Hall of Fame head coach fired, and it involved Adidas, the shoe company, clothing company, sports apparel company, making jerseys, making everything, making money and giving money to certain players. Uh, And now you're getting names of players who were paid, players' families who were paid, and now, apparently, on tape, the University of Arizona's head coach, Sean Miller, on tape, talking about a $100,000 payment to a player, and it is not good at all. Tommy, this is not good at all. And this, this is the world of college sports. As long as college sports bring in this much money, as long as people want to see March Madness, they want to see the college football playoff, they want to see the bowl games, there is always going to be this side until we start paying these players in some form. I agree with you, Maddie B. I do. Uh, you know, NCAA, I feel like they make so much money for their schools. I'm not saying they should get NBA, NFL salaries, but they should definitely be getting paid uh, to, to go to school. And they also get in their free school. I get that. But at the same time, let's keep them there a little bit longer. Let's make college athletics uh, fun and, you know, they stay four years. Or, you know, I mean, they're not going right to the NFL and getting paid. They're staying and getting their education. So when they're all beat up at the end of their career, Matty B., you know what? They have an education instead of just being all beat up. So, well, you know, and the business side of it, you got coaches making as much, if not more money, than the professional coaches. I mean, we just saw Jimbo Fisher get $75 million from Texas A&M. You know, I mean, that's, that's NFL money. And so you've got coaches making it, the schools making it, and technically these athletes are adults. They're 18, 19, 20, 21. They're not children, even though we call them kids, because they're not really adults. But legally, they're adults. They have the right to make some money. There needs to be something in place now. The education is not enough, and a lot of them don't go there for it anyways. You can't say, oh, they're getting a free college education anymore. That doesn't hold weight, and it really never did, it's only with certain styles of people. that say, Oh, that's good enough. No, it's really not, because the amount of money these players are bringing in and how much they're doing for the school, <laughs> an education, yeah, what are we doing for the school? Nothing. We're not doing anything. We're not bringing any money in. I'm not bringing any money in for the University of Arizona. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're not bringing any money in for Syracuse. You know? <laughs> Yeah, as a, as, a, as a fan, maybe on, on money, but uh, let's bring Captain in the mix. Captain, what do you think about this uh, situation? Captain, are you there? No? All right, let's go to Felix. Felix is back in the studio with us now. Felix. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, well, there you are, Captain. Let's. Uh, what do you think about the situation here on the NCAA basketball scandal now that you could call here in Arizona? Well, what, what, you know, look at, look at the guy from San Diego State yesterday getting popped, uh, Marcus Pope. Uh, you know, for a fourteen hundred dollar loan, uh, you, you have to, there's got to be some compensation somewhere 
you know, not maybe not Mercedes or cars, but but a snippet of two thousand dollars a month or something in that range, just to get these guys, you know, compensated for for all the money they do bring in. No, definitely. Uh, Felix, what do you think about this? College athletes get paid? That's what we were just talking about uh, while you were out of the studio. Well, you can, skin it, you can skin it a lot of different ways, and it's a very, very serious problem that's been going on for, for a long time in college basketball. Uh, this isn't something that just sprouted up over the last year or two years. This has been going on for years and years and years. And in order to get the key players, they were getting – Paid under the table, and there have been professional athletes that have shared with me off the record of what they received when they signed and they committed to the university that they wanted to play. So this has been a, an ongoing problem without any question at all, and now it is a federal problem. See, the NCAA will come, and uh, Tark always had to say, um, Tark had a saying, that uh, uh, the NCAA is so mad at North Carolina and Kentucky that they put Morgan State and Centenary on probation. Well, the, the colleges knew, in my estimation, these coaches knew that, uh, you know, that the NCAA really couldn't govern the improprieties that went into recruiting a player into their university, into their program. But now the stakes have been a lot higher, and they've been raised like a poker game where now the feds have come into it. And this is a problem, an epidemic that uh, we don't know where it might end. Now, you know, and I know, and Matty B and Captain might know that Sean Miller's from my hometown. His father was my basketball mentor. And uh, it hurts me to think that uh, Sean Miller has been wiretapped, mentioning, now this is all allegations, that uh, he was uh, mentioning uh, that he would take over the money aspect of it for Ayrton uh, getting $100,000. Now, Matty B., that's a big problem for Sean Miller and University of Arizona. Oh, this is, this is, if this if this ends up being true, don't be surprised if we never see Sean Miller coaching profe- college basketball again. That's and really that, unfortunate. I know it is because he's a he's a great basketball coach, and it's a shame that this is going to be considered a black mark. Because Felix, this has been the way it's always been. This has been the way it has always been in college sports from the beginning of college sports. When someone realized they could make some money off of this, this is the way that it's been. They made up. A movie on it in 1994, Blue Chips, with Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway, and they're showing them dropping off bags of money and dropping off tractors and new houses and new cars. And This is all true. This has happened. This has been happening. This is nothing new. But now really big names are getting involved because the FBI finally got involved. And if the FBI wanted to look as far back as 1950, you know how many scandals they would find if they really wanted to? This has been around. This is not new. But now that the feds are involved, it looks worse. No question about it. That's what I just said. It's a federal problem right now. It's been going on for a long period of time. But if you peel it back just a moment or just one layer, I should say, and and you look at it and you look where the problem arises. And the problem arises, in my estimation, Matty B, Captain, and Tommy D, in one element, and that's the AAU. In the AAU, uh, they put these club teams together of the the best players, and they travel to city to city and play in these tournaments, Las Vegas, Norfolk, Virginia, Syracuse, New York. It could be Orlando, Florida. It could be a number of different places uh, that uh, these basketball games take place. These kids are given, these kids are given shoes. They're given gear. uh, They're given stipends. And they're staying in very, very nice hotels, and actually what they are, to tell you the truth, and I hate to say this, but they're cattle. These kids are cattle, and so mm-hmm. when, you go, when you go to an event in AAU, and I've been around an AAU event before, and I suspected that something wasn't kosher 
at this high school basketball tournament that I went to. And uh, one weekend it was an AAU. The next weekend it was all the best teams in high school. Matty B., when you were here in San Diego, you remember the Above the Rim at Torrey Pines, the, mm-hmm. bas- the basketball tournament that they have. Now, I went there. Matter of fact, I was there from the, from the original uh, days when it started with Bobby Kapner. And Bobby Kapner, a former uh, BYU guard that went to Torrey Pines High School. And uh, he created a company called Above the Rim. He had a shoe, a shoe company and a gear company. And then he created this basketball tournament at his alma mater, Torrey Pines. And, and I would go see these teams come in from St. Anthony. I saw Bobby Hurley's father coach. I saw Danny Hurley play in it. I saw a lot of good players that went on to play professional basketball ball uh, in this high school tournament. One thing that derived from it all for me was the fact that there was some shenanigans going on because of the way these coaches would talk to these college players. I mean, these college coaches. The coaches of the AAU team I'm talking about would talk to the coaches of the college ranks in which uh, they were representing them and i think it's a big problem i think where the ncaa has to stop two things all right i want to get right to the point they have to stop two things they have to stop the shoe contracts or the shoe companies being involved with college basketball and they have to excuse and 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 just eliminate the aau do you agree with that maddie b no no Because I don't think it's going to fix anything. I don't think it's going to change anything. Just go, forget AAU, forget basketball. Let's go to college football for a minute. When you go to a bowl game, what's waiting for you in your hotel room? A goodie bag, a basket full of gifts, like iPods, iPads, different computers, different headphones, Beats headphones. You're getting thousands of dollars in gifts while still a college student playing in a bowl game just for making it to that bowl game. How is that any different? You're getting all sorts of stuff that they can do whatever they want. They can hock it. If they want, they need the money. These are free gifts. Same thing as if they got it from an agent, if they got it from a coach. So NCAA has allowed this in different manners before. I have spoken with plenty of people who are professional, who became professional athletes, and a few of them were members of the Kentucky Wildcats. And they told me if you stayed four years and you graduated from Kentucky, the day you graduated, you were handed $50,000. Now, you are no longer a college student. You have graduated, so it is no longer any kind of offense. But that was a promise to you if you stayed all four years and graduated with a degree in Kentucky basketball. Well, I'll go one step further. Uh, Sam Bowie signed with Kentucky, and he was highly co- coveted out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania. There were a number. He was, he was the king. Remember, he was drafted before uh, Michael Jordan. Number one pick for Michael Jordan. All right. So Sam Bowie signed with Kentucky. Under the assumption that when he graduated, he would get a foal. He would get a share of a horse that was being born at Kentucky, Lexington, Louisville, from a major farm, a booster, that he would have ownership in this colt, hopefully, that would go on to do big things like win the Kentucky Derby. And Sam Bowie, actually, if you follow Sam Bowie's career, not only did he get a horse at Kentucky, but he invested a lot of money in buying horses after that. So that's a good way to get somebody into the horse racing business. And Sam Bowie owned horses for many, many years. Now, look, it's an epidemic that goes back to the 60s when UCLA won 10 championships in a row, whatever they won. It doesn't make a difference. Are you telling me that these players that come from all over the country to come to play for John Wood and UCLA weren't being paid? I would defy you and argue to the day that I die. There's a gentleman named Sam Gilbert. If you listen and you read about it or you want to Google Sam Gilbert, he was the biggest booster. Do you think Lou Elsinder came from Power Memorial in New York to UCLA just because he wanted to take a plane ride or a flight from New York to California? Or do you think that uh, he benefited several hundred thousand dollars of being a UCLA Bruin, Matty B? Oh, I'm sure he benefited plenty. I mean, we were talking about arguably the greatest college basketball player of all time who went across the country to go play for UCLA and begin that dynasty that they just had running through the 60s. 
Um, so no, of course not. I don't. I believe. I believe this has been going on forever, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it because the NCAA hamstrings them so much. You have heard about this for so long. Former players suing to the video game likeness rights and things of that nature, and because the NCAA doesn't allow make any money and yet the NCAA makes millions. No, 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 they don't. Name. They don't make millions. Oh, they yes. they oh, make millions. They make billions. <laughs> that's me, a billion. Billions. You're 100% off of these, right. His name. Well, no, that's not that's just one that's just one aspect of it, dude. That's just one aspect. Their likely their likeliness of a video game. Ed O'Bannon yeah. was the you talking about UCLA. He's the mm-hmm. one that Ed O'Bannon, you know, took it to the Supreme Court of Nevada and, you know, got you know, got a judgment against the NCAA. It took him many years because he was uh washing his car one day and his brother ran out and said, Hey, I just got this new basketball game, whatever it was called, Xbox, Y box. It doesn't make a difference, but whatever. Uh, he was, you know, there was Ed O'Bannon wearing wearing the shirt, his jersey, and his number, playing in this video game, and they were selling this game for ninety nine dollars, and he wasn't making any money. But you know, the problem is, is that you can have a number of different opinions in regard on how to clean this up and where it's gone wrong. But the bottom line is very, very simple is that these kids are getting paid. You know what? When you go to a university and you're on scholarship, you get a credit card. It's an ATM card. And that every month there's money put into your account. So you can buy your toiletries, you can go to dinner, or you can spend money there. So the, the belief of these athletes not being paid is not true. They are being paid. Mm. No? No, I, no, I'm sorry. When you talk about where these athletes come from, the majority Please, of Please, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear that. That's not important. It's, it's, I'm sorry that you don't know. It's absolutely important. Why? Because if all these kids came from rich neighborhoods, normal neighborhoods that we think about growing up because we're from a different ilk, we're from a different generation, we're from a different group of people that got that benefit that a lot of these kids don't have. And they grow up poor, and their families are poor, and they want to take care of their mom, they want to take care of their dad, their brothers and their sisters, and they know that being able to put this ball in the hoop or to be able to score that touchdown is the way to do it. And you tell them that they can't do it for a few more years their family has to struggle for a few more years until they can get to the NBA and maybe oh, make dude, that dude, money. Dude, dude, no, hold on, hold we on. will help take care of your family. Here's money to take care of your family. Look, there are rules. There's rules. Yeah, and they're bad rules. Okay, all right. So, they're but there's still, rules. but there's still rules. No, doesn't make them right. Doesn't make them right. Just because NCAA acts like they, are, they can do no wrong, Listen. they do wrong every single day, it doesn't make it right. Listen, here's the deal. These kids, when they're playing in AAU, they sort of feel the sense of entitlement, meaning everything is given to them. They're driven to their games. Their sponsorship is paid by somebody else to be a member of the AAU team. They're getting the shoes, they're getting the gear, they're getting the notoriety, they're playing on big stages, they're on television on some occasions, because you see high school basketball now on ESPN. And so then when they showcase themselves and they start playing at that highest level, one thing that starts to generate and trickle down into them is that I'm going to charge for my services. And where it has become an epidemic and we're seeing this is with the shoe companies captain the shoe companies have dirtied basketball from a to z no it all starts with b and goes with me big baller lavar ball has caused you know he's really taken advantage of the situation uh you know First of all, you know, setting up his kid with the Lakers and, uh, you know, the, all, all the, the athletic wear. And now, now demanding that the Lakers sign both of his kids, otherwise he's going to pull his son out of there. You know, it, it's, it's, it's gone over the top is what it's done. And, uh, you know, uh, you just gotta, you just got to pull everything back and start over again, start from scratch, because uh, the, it's like the swamp. No, 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 listen, listen here. Okay, did anybody ever see the, sh- the 
the 30 on 30 called the shoe man? I believe so. Yes, yes, I did. You did see it, right, Matty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the shoe store in, in Atlanta, right? It was... Um, was it in Atlanta? Uh, no. Yeah, it's in Atlanta. All the players go there. They spend, you know, $100,000, no, no, $2 million. No, 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 no. This is, this is the... Uh, this is the 30 on 30 uh, documentary with Sonny Vaccaro, who was a head of oh, the, Nike. The Nike one, sorry. Wrong, okay. wrong shoe man. There's a different shoe man one by another 30 okay. for 30. So my, po- my point being is, is that all of a sudden, Tommy D, this goes back to your neighborhood. And what they did was Sonny Vaccaro was this uh, big basketball uh I don't know, entrepreneur, I would say. He is a promoter. Uh, He promoted one of the best high school basketball games, classics, uh, before the McDonald's Classic back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, my hometown, with the Dapper Dan round ball classic at the Civic Arena where he would pit the Catholic All-Stars versus the City League All-Stars in the city of Pittsburgh, and then he'd have the USA team versus the greats from Pennsylvania. And this would happen on a Friday night at the Civic Arena, and it was the biggest basketball classic. And so then he went on to uh, work as a marketing rep. Matter of fact, he, he handled Kobe, he handled uh, Jordan, and he handled LeBron. And this, it, it, I can't believe that you guys haven't seen this, but you have to watch it. It's really fascinating. And what happened is that he had this idea, Tommy D, that he would go to... And he started with the Big East. And one of the first coaches he started with was Jim Baham at Syracuse. And he said, listen, I have all these shoes. If your team wears our shoes, I'll pay you, Jim Baham, $100,000. Well, at that time... Coaches weren't making what they were making now. They might have been making two, three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand. 350000 you know, maybe even less than that. I don't know. No, less than that. Bayham said that, said that Nike paid him more than, than uh, Syracuse did. All right. So, Tommy D., so you see how the chain of this epidemic and the train of this epidemic has begun and where it is. Because if I'm giving you $100,000 to wear my shoes, these agents are going to these colleges who are endorsed by these companies I mean, you understand where I'm going with this, Matty B, where that, uh, the fact that Adidas, Adidas at the University of Louisville uh, just put $22 million into Louisville's athletic account for them being the official wearer of Adidas, which, remember, um, the athletic director's daughter got hired by Adidas. And so that money was all dirty money where what they did is they filtered and they sort of directed players, college players, to university that were wearing Adidas. And that was the problem at Louisville. Do you concur, Matty B? I, I, I agree that it happened. I don't know if I would ever call it a problem. I would call it a fact of life when it comes to collegiate sports. What do you mean it's not a problem? If I'm if if I'm if I'm paying you a hundred thousand dollars illegally because you're directing a kid to my program that is wearing Adidas, you don't you don't think that's a problem? I don't see what the illegal part is. Pardon People me? talk to players all the time. Head coaches talk to players all the time. You got high school coaches who are trying to get their coach their kids to go to the alma mater or the. All right, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear that. If you have a son, eighteen years old, and he can go to Cornell and get an education, but North Carolina State's knocking on your door and said, "Hey, listen, here's a hundred thousand if you get your kid coming to North Carolina State. Would you take it?" I tell my kid, "You can North Carolina State still, but yeah, you would take the money." Absolutely, and tell my kid to get that degree. Though he's staying all four years, he's graduating, he's getting that degree. Greenville. Don't matter. A degree is a degree. North Carolina State's in Raleigh. 
Maybe Durham. I don't care. You major university, you get a degree from it, you go on to have a life afterwards in no matter what field. But you got that degree. You got that diploma. You got that degree, and you're set. All you're right. Out from there. Wake up. Tommy D, do you think these high school kids understand the value of money more so than we did when we played? No, I think it's an issue in high schools. I think they need to have an economics class and teach more about that than some of the other stuff they I teach. I disagree. I don't think they teach enough about economics no, I'm not in teaching high school. About, but these kids are all money oriented. They, they, I mean, yeah, they, they know I the agree. Gear. I agree with you. Yeah, when you're a high school kid and you're picking a college, whatever school, whatever school has cool gear is going to definitely maybe determine where you go. All right, let me ask you this: Your seven footer, Tommy Delorba, from uh, Niagara, New York. All right, and uh, you're you're a, a three star recruit. You're about the you're a bad seven footer than if you're only a three star. <laughs> you know what? That's a good point, Batty. You could at least make me a better, <laughs> yeah. better seven I mean, footer. Okay, now, now, he, now he's all upset at me because footer, now he just. I might as well stay home, play yeah, uh, just, junior college. He just, he for just two years. He, he just walked out. He's Sean Bradley. <laughs> okay, he wants another two hundred thousand. Okay, but the bottom line is, yeah, that's a good point, Matty B. It's funny because I got to tell you a story off the air about this, about the three star recruit. But anyway, we are going to a break. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about this today, tomorrow, for a while. But March Madness, boys, we're two weeks two weeks away from Selection Sunday. The question is in this studio at this hour, will Syracuse be invited to the dance? We'll come back and find out right after this. You take your smartphone almost everywhere you go. Now WSRadio.com can be there, too. Search WS Radio in the Play Store for your Android devices or iTunes for Apple and download the WS Radio application. WSRadio.com, on your phone and in your ear everywhere you go. Download the WS Radio application. Do it now. It's very easy. WSRadio.com. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. VinVillage connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. VinVillage is where wine lovers connect. You've heard me bragging about Progressive Medical Center and how they've helped me feel so much healthier. But one thing, Dr. Agoli, that a lot of people come to you with is just unexplained pain. They just can't get any relief. Why can Progressive Medical Center's Pain Management Center help them? First of all, we have to acknowledge that pain is for real and you've got acute pain and chronic pain. Here's the problem. That acute pain turns to chronic, which is longstanding, and no one's getting to the root cause. There's several key diagnostic components that help us get to the root of what's causing this pain. Is it inflammation? Once we do a thorough evaluation to get the root cause determined if it's structural or if it's a metabolic issue. And this way, we put an individualized program for pain management involving correcting the spine, using certain injections when necessary, and we get our patients out of pain quicker and they stay out of pain because we teach them how to live their life well. Don't let yourself live in pain any longer. Get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today at ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. Life is full of misadventures, from car crashes to home fires to getting choked out on the mat. Yes, I said getting choked out because I'm Carlos Kramer, jiu-jitsu competitor, MMA and media personality, and mild-mannered insurance agent. You can follow my adventures on Kick-Ass Radio, and I can protect you from life's misadventures at Kramer Insurance. Home, auto, life, business, and workers' comp. We're at KramerINS.com, and I want you to join my world. I've heard this is, like, one of the best pizza spots in town. Yes, it is. I'll do a slice of pepperoni, slice of vegetarian. You got it. And I will pay for all of that in three days. In three days? <laughs> What's that mean? Well, wait, you accept credit cards. That money's not going to hit your account for three days anyway. I need my money quicker. At Chase, we hear you. With Express Funding, card payments are in your Chase account the next business day. Go to chase.com slash express funding. Chase for business, so you can. Compensated participation, all businesses are subject to credit approval. Not all clients are eligible for next business day funding and additional terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com. 
Welcome to Track Talk, your connection to thoroughbred horse racing from coast to coast and beyond. The latest news, development, stake race analysis, and interviews inside the sport of kings from California, New York, Florida, and Kentucky, and wherever Major League Racing takes us, we got you covered. It's post time. All right, we're back. We'll, we'll change that before Memorial Day. There's no question about that. Bottom line on a Saturday, 8, eight to 9, with track talk every Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 10 on the same days, the bottom line, along with Matty B, Tommy D, the captain, talking about uh, the recruiting scandal, which now has uh, really burst at the seams. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Sean Miller is coaching tonight. They're playing. What do you think, Matty B? Will he be on the sidelines? I don't know. I mean, you haven't produced anything yet. It's right now still just hearsay. I get it to the FBI. And there's a lot more weight to this hearsay than someone else saying it. But there still hasn't been any proof produced yet. And there haven't been any charges. And you are innocent until proven guilty. And I, I would think that he is somewhere in the building for the game. Maybe it's Romar that's coaching this team uh, tonight. Um, it's just it's a bad spot. It's a very bad spot for Arizona. Um, it's a very bad spot for Sean Miller. Uh, it, it's gut wrenching and it's you know, and this is potentially crushing for the program because of how much it can set it back with a program that has been a decent program over the last few years, still hasn't made that final four, uh, got knocked out in the Elite Eight two years in a row. It's a very good Wisconsin team. Um, but, uh, you know, this could be a, something that just sets Arizona back, you know, quite a few years if this all comes down as heavy as it looks. Yeah, it could be. And, and um, you know, I was there when they, uh, they, uh, they, they, took, they were playing up in Los Angeles at the, the Honda Center, and they played San Diego State. San Diego State had them beat. San Diego State coughed it up late. And then a day later, two days later, Wisconsin upset Arizona. Sean Miller has never been to the Final Four as his nine-year tenure at head coach. And I, I kind of feel really sad about what is going on here in college basketball. But we'll find out exactly how it all comes to, to a head. And, you know, maybe the reason why in, 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 other, in other information that was a part of the investigation – or was um, that uh, bad news even hit Arizona more so on Thursday when Alonzo... Hell, that's just garbage. What's that? That one's just all garbage and just a bad look on the end. It's the same substance that he missed 19 games for last year where there were trace amounts, and I am talking minuscule trace amounts of something in his body and something that stores in your fat cells. And when something stores in your fat cells, it stays in your body longer than things that don't store in your fat cells. And they are saying that this is the exact same stuff that was found a year ago. And when he knew going in that you were going to be drug tested, he's either a complete and utter idiot for giving up his chance of going to the NBA because he would have been drafted. He might not have been a first-round pick. He might have been early second round. But he would have been drafted and had a chance to show what he's got and make that money. But he chose to come back. And to choose to come back and know that you're going to be drug tested and keep taking the same substance, it just makes no sense. This is the same stuff that was found. And when I say the same stuff, I mean from the time that it was found last time. This is that same amount. And it's still in his body, stored in his fat cells. And they're going to do another test, and they're going to show probably the same thing. What's the point of another test? It's stored in your fat cells and staying there for a long time. He should, this should not even be happening to him. It should not even be mentioned. He should be allowed to play and just let it go. Aiton... With this $100,000 discussion, there's no proof that DeAndre Ayton took the money. So I wonder what his eligibility is as far as being able to play in tonight's game and the future NCAA tournament. Good question. Fine question that will be following And along. I want to know why you, why, why, also why ESPN keeps showing Miles Bridges. When you look at the offenses that happen, and the offense with Miles Bridges from Michigan State is that his mom got $400 and that an agent paid a $70 dinner. Um, this is his mom. This isn't him. This is his mom. And it has nothing to do with him. And it's the lowest amount of money on, this, on these numbers by far. 
Dennis Smith Jr. got $73,000 for NC State. Markel Fultz got $10,000. Uh, Kyle Kuzma got $10,000. You got all these big ones. But the photo they show is Miles Bridges, whose mom got $400 and a $70 dinner. <laughs> I just don't get it. Yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. And, uh, you know, uh, they're, in, they're in major hot water right now, college basketball. They're um, hurting themselves. The NCAA tournament, and you are hurting yourself before it. What's that? The NCAA is hurting themselves right now. The, the March Madness is right around the corner. And you are killing your big name programs that bring all the excitement to your tournament. All right, let me right take it. Let tournament. me take it one step further here. If they find illegal action with these twenty teams, or the fifteen, or seventeen, or eighteen, or how many that came out this week of uh, being under investigation by the FBI, uh, do they uh, do they prevent them from getting into the big dance, Matty B? I would say no, before because you don't know how much head coaches knew about these different situations. You don't know how much the university as a whole knew. You know that certain assistant coaches ha- knew what was going on. They were involved. Um, a lot of these assistant coaches are no longer with these programs. Um, so I don't know how much of a hammer comes down on schools themselves until more evidence is produced of what schools actually knew, what head coaches actually knew. The big question at this hour, 9.36 on a Saturday. We're live from the WS Radio Networks. This is the Bottom Line Sports Show. We are the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Mm, Tommy D. Tommy D., you're next up. Thanks for joining us on the radio program. Question I have for you, Tommy D. Does Syracuse go dancing this year because they got a big game tonight? Prime time with the Dukies, what do you think? You know what? It's going to take a win today to to get them there. I think that they're still on the bubble there. I don't think they've locked a spot yet. I think they still need some work to do. Uh, they played UNC really tough. They had a chance. They were at home, though, but they had a chance to win the game with uh, Howard, the point guard, taking a shot. Uh, today against Duke, uh, it's going to be a big one. Duke uh, having some allegations there. Who knows if some of the players are going to be playing or what's going to go on with that. Hopefully they're not, and if that helps, that will help Syracuse. Then they have Boston College at Boston College, and then they play Clemson. So uh, they should be able to win Boston College, Clemson, hopefully to finish off. But if they could beat Duke today I think they uh, and win one game in the ACC tournament, I think they get in. You got the um, ACC standings in front of you? Uh, I can get it here for you. Matty B.? How many, yes, how, many, yeah, right how many ACC teams make it to the dance? Uh, uh, six for sure, maybe seven. It's not a year where the ACC gets nine or ten or eleven in. Um, I think personally right now Syracuse is in a play-in game, one of the first four, uh, maybe against Florida, maybe against USC, maybe against UCLA. Who? Um, who? Who? who Mar- Did you say Maryland? No, I said Florida, USC, and UCLA. I think those three teams, as well as Syracuse, are all right now playing teams, teams that will be in the first four playing for that 11 spot or that 12 spot to actually be in the big dance. You think so? Yeah. Who's your dark horse? Dark horse. Um, come back next well, week, Matty B. Come back next week. We You're before, taking, hold on, Matty, we Matty B. We talked about Cincinnati, and, they, and we, I told you they had big games against yeah. Wichita State coming up, and they yeah. lost that first one. Yep. Yeah. They did. That was a big blow. Tommy D, you were on Cincinnati last week. I was. Week. I Wichita still like Shockers him. come in and... Uh, Shock. You know, I mean, it's uh, pretty tough. So, Captain, give me a dark horse. Uh, you know, gee whiz. Uh, I don't know if TCU is going to get in, but I, I just I, I like the team. Uh, they they got to overcome an injury, but uh, TCU would be my play. All right, TCU, my man, Jamie Dixon from... Fort Worth, TCU Horn Frogs in the Big 12. Big 12 battle tonight. I think you're going to see two top teams play tonight. 27-22, uh, TCU is beating Baylor right now. Yeah. Just the score update since yeah. we were talking about it. About um, what time does Texas, uh, what time does, uh, Texas Tech Kansas go today? Uh, that's a later game. Let's, uh, let's see here. I think I saw it, 115. I think you are correct. One fifteen on ESPN. You can catch that action. Yeah, that should What's be a great game, game? at Texas Tech. Game? I don't have the line here on my side. 
Uh, but let me see. I might be able to get it here. Guys, you know the line on the Kansas-Texas Tech game by any chance? Kansas-Texas no. Tech. Let me check on that. Kansas favored. I'll put that much the, out there. You know, but <laughs> Texas Tech's ranked six, Maddie B. Kansas is eight, and they're playing at Texas Tech. Don't you think they deserve a little respect? No. <laughs> it's still Kansas. It's still Kansas. And I, with all the, all the talk of them not, not winning the Big 12 for the first time in God knows how long, um, they are, once again, atop the Big 12 standings at 11-4. Texas, Texas Tech right behind them. Against Kansas. Texas Tech minus two? Yeah. Wow. All right. There you go, Matty B. Maybe Kansas play there for you? Uh, yeah, on the road especially this year because Kansas has a hard, harder time winning at home so far this year than on the road. What other games caught your eye today, Maddie? Be uh, out of these top twenty games, uh, top twenty teams, or any game that caught your eyes, or one that you're zero in on? I mean, just looking at bubble teams, obviously versus teams that are in, teams trying to you know, stock a little bit more. Uh, you know, you got Creighton trying to trying to force, trying to talk their way in. They got Villanova that's at Creighton. Uh, big chance there for the uh, Blue Jays to take down a very very good team, top three team in Villanova. Uh, you got. Virginia against your Pittsburgh Panthers there, Felix. Pittsburgh having a uh, horrible down team. year. Horrible, Eight horrible, and horrible. On the year. Over in the ACC. Rough. Um, and St. Mary's. St. Mary's is still playing for a lot right now. They are one of those teams that is looking like they might get the shaft, as unbelievable as that sounds. Um, and so they just need to keep on winning and keep forcing the issue of saying that we are a play tournament team and stop overlooking us. And, of course, Arizona tonight at Oregon with everything that's going on. I want to see who's in the lineup. I want to see who's coaching on the sidelines. Uh, so i got to check that one out. That's the late game tonight, 7-15 out there on the West Coast, 10-15 out here on the East Coast. Oregon's a two-point favorite in that game. <laughs> Tough yeah. place to play up there in Oregon. Always has been. Yeah, I don't think the coach is going to show up. I mean, they're playing on the road. That's going to be a pretty tough crowd if he comes out. I think they leave him off, uh, honestly. I hope they do because he's just going to get tormented by the crowd. Um, you know and how a, these college fans could be. A sneaky one tonight. Florida, one of these bubble teams I'm talking about, at home hosting Auburn. Big chance for them to get a staple win against a top 15 team and boost their chances of making the NCAA tournament. What do you know about Middle Tennessee, number 24? Do you know anything uh, about Middle Tennessee? We, we, don't, we don't talk about Middle Tennessee in this family. <laughs> why is that, Maddie B? Tell Felix, us. Why tell don't us. we talk about Middle I know Tennessee why. in tell this us. family? Why not? <laughs> What's up, Maddie? A 15 over a 2. It has happened, I believe, eight times in the NCAA tournament. And the last time it happened was two years ago. Michigan State was the 2. Middle Tennessee State was the 15. And Middle Tennessee State pulled the upset in the opening days of the NCAA tournament. So we don't talk about Middle Tennessee around here. Mm. <laughs> Middle Tennessee beat who? Michigan no. State University you know a couple years ago. But no, they're having a very good year. 22-5 and five on the year. They're in the top 25. Um, you know, they're not, uh, they're not sneaking up on anybody this year. Who'd they beat? No, they're playing today. Now, who'd they beat last time they were in Michigan the Michigan State, he just said. Number, Michigan State was number two. Really? Spartans, yeah, and they were, and they. Were, I remember we were going into the tournament complaining that we weren't a one seed, and then don't even bring it again. And that was that was a that was a fool's gold year for Michigan State. That team could not force a turnover to save their life, and it, and it proved true with Middle Tennessee State as they got like I think four turnovers the entire game and hit three after three and just took it to the Spartans early and often. And Michigan State was out of it by halftime. Who did Arizona lose to that one year that they were upset? Uh, I mean, there was Xavier in the six eleven game. No. Who else? Miami of Ohio. You remember that one? No. Miami of Ohio beat Arizona. Huh? The guy, guys, guys, what, what Gonzaga goes into BYU and is only a five point favorite at BYU today. Who? Gonzaga goes into BYU minus five. Am I missing somebody? Somebody hurt. I mean, BYU is a good team. They're, they got 22 wins on the season. They're not scrubs. I like BYU here. You like BYU? I, I, I think I, I do. I yeah, we just saw Gonzaga play USD. Um, and you know what? USD was right with them the whole game. And Gonzaga looked a little flat, I got to tell you. Yeah, USD it, gets better talent, though, than Gonzaga does, even with them not being as good. But BYU doesn't. BYU, <laughs> I like BYU. Game. They always got some solid. They are, they're they're hard playing. They, I think they're a well-coached team, and they always seem to play. I'll tell you who's really well-coached. We've been talking about him a little bit off and on. 
The Rams from Rhode Island with Danny Hurley. I mean, uh, they, mm-hmm. they clinched. Very, yeah, this is a very good basketball team. March Madness Selection Sunday, just two weeks away. And um, Ashton Tipton, right? <laughs> that was pretty funny, wasn't it? Okay, so, um, you know, you're going to be glued to the TV sets, you know. First of all, I feel that Louisville was dumped on by the NCAA. And I'll tell you why I feel that way. Because if these kids, and Matty B., you probably know a little bit more about it than I do. But if these kids were all academically eligible to participate in that tournament, there should be no reason why these kids were stripped of a title that they won on the court. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Okay. So then explain to me, because this could be a real national broadcast here, the bottom line. Tell me how, Matty B., and tell our audience throughout the country worldwide as well. Tell us, tell them why there's a difference between Louisville and what they did and got stripped of their national title having to give all the money back versus North Carolina having different people take SAT and ACT tests for North Carolina and they get, okay, no problem, no impropriety was detected, move on, when you know darn right that there was at least six to eight kids on that North Carolina basketball team that never even saw an ACT classroom. Because the NCAA are hypocrites as a whole. They love getting your money, and they love attacking you afterwards. It's almost like baseball with the steroid scandal and how they used Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa to bring the fans back to baseball after the strike in 94. The 98 home run race brought the fans back to baseball. Barry Bonds starting to do what he did brought fans back to baseball. The baseball, was, had... the baseball was juiced. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The baseball... The higher up the baseball knew this was going on, used it to bring the fans back, to bring the money back, and then condemned them afterwards. San Francisco Giants used Barry Bonds to sell out their parts night after night after night. And the second he retired, he took every banner of his down and made it look like he was never a San Francisco Giant. The NCAA works the same way. They loved what USC did in the middle of the 2000s, yet will take Reggie Bush's Heisman away from him because his parents got a house in San Diego. Oh, no, 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 they, no, 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 no. Don't go there. Don't oh, no, go, I'll there. go there. I no, no, go there the because let me tell you. It's no. critical as can be. No, when let it me tell you. No, no, let me tell you. They will take your money, but let, they will condemn no, you afterwards. Let me, let me tell you that the Reggie Bush situation, I was working at Saquon at the time as a host, and I'm privy to that situation where. You had a magic I, show at Saquon Casino? <laughs> what's that? You had a magic show at the Quang Casino? No, I, I ran the <laughs> men's restroom, okay? I mean, well, yeah, what do you what do you think? If he uh, did, I, if he did oh, have a magic show. Matter of fact, I was, the guy, I was the guy tapping underneath <laughs> the stall, okay? Remember, you came by. All right, so the bottom line was this, okay? That A, a was this, that these two individuals, one was a tribal member of Saquon, put together a package and said to Reggie Bush, we will do this, this, and this for you upon you playing football at USC and you graduating and then you allowing us to be your agent to represent you in the NFL negotiations. And everything was well. And so what they did, Hold on. So in order for that to happen, they put Reggie Bush's mother and father in this house. They lived in this house two years. Rent free. They lived in this house uh, with cars available to them. Maybe even had a little gambling credit line at Saquon. I don't know. And when it came time for Reggie Bush to sign with these two individuals, Reggie Bush decides that he's not going to sign with them, and so they want the money back of six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. And when Reggie Bush refused to give the money back after signing a multi-million dollar contract. 
a multi-million dollar contract. These two individuals decided that they were going the route of the courts to make sure that there was going to be justice served. And you know what happened in that whole situation? That Reggie Bush lost his Heisman Trophy. USC was stripped. All he had to do was pay back the 600000 and he would still have his Heisman Why Trophy. Should he? Huh? Why should he? Did he sign something saying he would? He agreed to. He agreed. He agreed. Did he sign any? Was there any pen to paper saying, I, Reggie Bush, will pay you this money back if I decide not to sign with you once I become a professional athlete? Well, I didn't know, you were, I didn't know you were such a legal source all of a sudden. I'm just saying, I don't know. You're talking, you're but, talking I mean, about rules but, and rules being broken. Hey, there are laws here. You signed a deal. That's a different story. Well, if he didn't sign a deal, and regardless, what does any of that have to do with the NCAA and Reggie Bush's performance on the field? Absolutely nothing. He getting, earned getting, that Heisman as the best player in college football, one of the best we've ever seen in college football. It's a rule. A rule was broken. If you're gonna why have rules if you're gonna be able to go well, what difference does it make? The NCAA says, rule makes no sense. You know what? what? It's, it's like I'm not, saying it, does, I'm not saying it doesn't I'm not saying it doesn't make any sense. No I'm sense. not making the rules, dude. I'm not making the rules, but that's the rules that have been stipulated by the National Collegiate Athletic Association, known as the NCAA. The Those National are the rules. Hypocritic Collegiate. <laughs> well, you know, it could be, it could be that, and you know what? Um, you know, I was very close to Tark sued. Jerry Tarkanian sued the NCAA. Okay, you yeah. know what? You know what Why he took won? Forever to get into the Hall of Fame. Pardon me. That's why they took forever to put him, finally put him in the Hall of Fame. Well, that's one reason. <laughs> That's one reason. But do you know how much the NCAA had to pay him to settle? Uh, I, oh, I do, but I'm, I'm blanking. Please right. tell me. I don't. I, 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 think, I, I just went through this, actually, because I wrote about this. Remember, I asked for your help. I wrote a story about Tark after he, yeah. you know, after he passed and after he got in and everything, and, uh, and that was part of it. I'm just blanking on the actual number. Tark told me a situation where one of the players that he had, their mother died and lived in Oklahoma. The kid had no money, so Tark paid for the kid's flight to Oklahoma to bury his mother, and it was a violation of the NCAA. Now, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty rough right there when you think about that one. And so I'm not like I'm in bed with the NCAA by any means. But you got to have some rules, and all these rules have gone. Hey, let me tell you something. Are you telling me it took the FBI to find out of this scandal in college basketball that we're presently experiencing right now? No, they've known about it. Then, then why, why hasn't the NCAA done anything about it? Because the NCAA is making money off of it, and they don't want to kill themselves too much. Okay. So, They'll hand down punishments. It's really funny. For, it's really Duke, funny to Kentucky, me, however. Carolina, Michigan State, the FBI, the FBI, I mean. the FBI couldn't find Nicholas Cruz, the shooter of the Florida high school, but they could find a seventy-dollar dinner tab that a booster paid for a college basketball player. Wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty solid investigation work there. Well, I mean, you know, the FBI does have different, you know, different groups for these, different yeah, specialties yeah, for these. Yeah. Now, I wish they would have more people put on this side as far as when it comes to stopping, you know, mentally ill people being able to get guns and go back to their schools. And, I mean, speaking of, I mean, did, you, did you see the story with, uh, oh, God, the former uh, NFL player who got bullied at Miami by uh, Richie Incognito? Yeah. I mean, posting a picture of a shotgun and putting Miami Dolphins on there, his school on there. They're tagging certain players in it. I mean, wow. Yeah, he really lost it, didn't he? No, he really lost it. Yep. All right, we're out of here till tomorrow morning. Really great radio productions today on the WS Radio Networks. Uh, the, the Track Talk, 8 to 9, followed by the bottom line. Uh, content is what we deliver to you every Saturday and Sunday in Thoroughbred Horse Racing. want to thank Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith for joining us. A big coup having Mike on the radio program. Maddie B., the captain, Tommy D., Wade Taylor, WS Radio Nation. You're listening to the Bottom Line Sports Show right here every Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 10. Join us 8 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time tomorrow morning for Track Talk followed by the Bottom Line. Until then, adios and have yourself a great day. 
You've heard me bragging about Progressive Medical Center and how they've helped me feel so much healthier. But one thing, Dr. Agoli, that a lot of people come to you with is just unexplained pain. They just can't get any relief. Why can Progressive Medical Center's Pain Management Center help them? First of all, we have to acknowledge that pain is for real and you've got acute pain and chronic pain. Here's the problem. That acute pain turns to chronic, which is longstanding, and no one's getting to the root cause. There's several key diagnostic components that help us get to the root of what's causing this pain. Is it inflammation? Once we do a thorough evaluation to get the root cause determined if it's structural or if it's a metabolic issue. And this way, we put an individualized program for pain management involving correcting the spine, using certain injections when necessary, and we get our patients out of pain quicker and they stay out of pain because we teach them how to live their life well. Don't let yourself live in pain any longer. Get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today at ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. You take your smartphone almost everywhere you go. Now WSRadio.com can be there too. Search WS Radio in the Play Store for your Android devices or iTunes for Apple and download the WS Radio application. WSRadio.com on your phone and in your ear everywhere you go. Download the WS Radio application. Do it now. It's very easy. WSRadio.com. Are you a small business or nonprofit? Securing our eCity Foundation offers free cybersecurity seminars so businesses of every size can become more cyber safe. According to Forbes, just one cybercrime incident can cost a company over $15 million. Protect yourself, your employees, and your business before you fall victim to the nation's fastest growing crime. Go right now to securingourecity.org or call 619 630 2444. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the Coaches Training Program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. 